Well, uh, for a while, uh, pernatinib was uh, uh, considered very effective, but there was a lot of concern about using it because of these arterial occlusive events. Uh, the, the, the label quotes uh, uh, a rate of greater than 30%. Uh, but that includes all sorts of events. Um, for example, non-cardiogenic chest pain and coldness of hands and things like that. And that's not informative because those things are not really the kind of things that we are worried about in this patient population, considering they have received so many therapies before. So I think that these can help um, alleviate that concern and uh, and um, make sure that we provide these valuable options to patients when it is indicated. Uh, the problem we had seen is that some patients who really have the indication have not been receiving this, this drug because of those concerns. So I think we can, one can feel comfortable that when the patient has the indication, they could be properly treated with pronatinib, get the benefit, adjust the dose, continue to monitor. Of course, we need to manage the comorbidities, and with that, it becomes a drug that is uh, very manageable for the great majority of patients.